<laughs> G'day guys, thanks for dropping in. Recently I shot an event, it was pretty cool. It was put on by the Wellington Indoor Riding School Formation Club. And they're actually doing it to raise funds for the New Zealand Cancer Society. Wow, what a cool cause. They actually raised over $4,000. And I had the opportunity to go and take some photos. And in this video, I'm just gonna let you know what sort of challenges I encountered and how maybe I overcame them. Because it was pretty dark. And as you can see in these shots here, I really had to work at it. For the shoot, I'm shooting with the Canon EOS R, with the Canon EF 70-200, F2.8 IS USM version 2. I also had another body with a wider lens, and I'd alternate between the two. And I gotta say, it was a really cool show. Look at these young riders and their ponies, just doing such a great job. And the beginning of the shoot wasn't too bad actually, it was quite light. So I was able to get some pretty cool shots. But even though it appears light, it was still them that I had to really push the ISO. Pushing the ISO means you have to slow down your shutter to try and get more light in. But of course we're dealing with moving subjects. <laughs> so it's a real balance. Between getting your ISO high enough that you've still got room to edit without so much noise being introduced, and also keeping your shutter fast enough to be able to capture some of that moving action. And throughout the shoot, my settings change so much, there's almost no point covering them, but it's just a matter of tilting that balance. As you adjust the ISO driving that up, you have to slow the shutter down. You know, you basically have to shoot wide open, so your field of focus is gonna be more narrow than what you might expect. That's indoors, of course, in the dim situations. Outside on the yard, it was too easy. ISO 100, go for gold. I don't need sort of events I'm looking for symmetry or formation for the frame to be balanced. And the thing is, it's not only the exposure you have to think about in the dark or in the dim conditions, it actually affects other functions of the camera, like its ability to pick white balance if you shoot with auto white balance. Or speaking of auto, the focus. The autofocus struggles, it really battles. You do have to work at it. I found myself at times switching into manual focus and using the focused assist in the EOS R. But even after a short while, I found that wasn't good enough. It wasn't fast enough, it wasn't spontaneous enough for me to be able to get the shots I needed. So eventually I shot back to autofocus using a single point autofocus right in the center of the frame. One shot is good for slow moving objects, but when they start moving around, servo is the way to go. But I always find that one shot gives me a sharper focus. And look at these conditions here, how dark it is. The camera just would not focus. And not only that, I really wanted to keep the ISO within about 3,200. Try not to go above that because after that your photos become very blocky. And you only have to look at the raw images here to see how much I was actually struggling with the light. But hey, it's all good fun and everyone loved the photos. And as you would have seen there, most of them came off pretty good. Not too bad overall, I was pleased. I'll tell you what though, I did take over 1300 photos and delivered about 300. So I guess the key message out of this is to just keep shooting lots and lots of photos. You're gonna get the shot you need in there somewhere. Hey, I hope you got some tips out of this video. I know it was fairly general in nature, but just some experience. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna leave you with my favorite photo from this shoot. I really love the light on this one and also the symmetry in the form of the rider and horse. They're almost in the perfect position. It's really, really great. Have a good one and we'll catch you next time.